Hey guys, this is Chris Kermis and I've just completed a 580 kilometer journey northwest to the city of Shiraz. I complete my loop back to Tehran. It's known as the city of poets, literature and flowers and it's got incredible sights both within and around. Come with me as we enter this new phase of this incredible journey. You may notice this video is a lot longer than the others in the series so far, and that's for a good reason. Shiraz has so much to offer. Incredible sights, delicious food. So stick with me till the end, and I'll show you as much as I can from this amazing Iranian city. So I'm just in the old city now, and we're heading down to the first site of the day, the Pink Mosque. Supposedly, this part of the city has been mostly left by the richer people, as the buildings are all quite old here, and they've moved to more modern areas. But this part of the old city in the center is basically where all of the sites are, so it's a great place to come in Shiraz. And would you look at this place, it's just beautiful. This incredible stained glass window shining this incredible light on the floor. It's just spectacular. This incredible tile work above. I've never seen anything like it. Wow, amazing. And look at this, even in this courtyard, it looks just as spectacular. It's absolutely beautiful out here. A fantastic building behind. So the Pink Mosque was built in the 19th century under the Qajar dynasty. And it's got this perfect courtyard in the middle with the famous side with the stained glass windows being the winter mosque, these wide, wide windows to allow more light in the colder periods of the year. And then the opposite side, the summer mosque, a lot smaller windows set back so the sun wouldn't shine in. And you see the detail of this amazing tile work, all the pink that's featured, which is exactly why this mosque gets its name. In Islam, it's believed that there's seven levels to the sky. This actually stated in the Quran. And this incredible detailing illustrates that. You see, as we raise up the sections here, star fields going up to the very top level in the center, which is where God is. Okay, before we go to the next big tourist site, we're actually gonna take a little detour here. We're gonna go to a little bakery, which makes a very traditional Shiraz sweet. And if we're lucky, we might just time it right so we can actually see it being made. So we've stopped off at this little bakery type place. This is making a, the traditional sweet. It's a sweet bread, very traditional in Shiraz here. Oh wow, thank you, thank you. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh, it's really sweet. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, this is the dough being cooked on this amazing, amazing, huge hot plate. Never seen anything like it. And the, the skill to spread that thin dough over that huge plate is just incredible. Oh. Thank you, thank you, sir. Mm. Don't mind if I do. Okay, so this lovely shop is about 71 years old. Gonna try another traditional Shiraz sweets here. No, let me open it for you. So what is this called? Mas Ati. Mas Ati. Yeah. So this is the other yeah, traditional sweet here. With almonds, with oh, almonds, look at this. Yeah, pistachio, barberry, and coconut. And oh, with the honey, just coconut. Yeah. Looks incredible. Yeah. You can taste now. Right, so this is the one with pistachios. This looks amazing. Right, here we go. Mmm, yeah. Oh, that's good. Wow. It reminds me a lot of Turkish delights. Yeah. It's a uh, delicious, lovely, lovely sweet. Mm. And now after some tasty, tasty sweet pastry, we're gonna head to Naranjistan Avant Garden, the next okay. site. And this is the entrance to the Naranjistan Avant Garden. This is from the Qajar dynasty, and you see the guards in stone guarding the way in. So as I say, this was built under the Qajar dynasty. 
but they're not generally liked in Iran. Under their rule, a lot of the country was lost to neighboring countries, and also they were very much known for killing of wild animals, particularly killing the lion, because they saw it as the most powerful creature. So to kill the most powerful creature made you the most powerful. So why Naranjistan? Well, Shiraz is known for its bitter oranges, which are actually called Naranj. And there were so many bitter orange fields around Shiraz. This is called Naranjistan after these bitter oranges. So these reliefs that you see behind me, these are modeled after the same sort of style as Persepolis. The Qajari dynasty basically wanted to say to the people that they were the sons of the Achaemenid dynasty who ruled in Persepolis. This is the mirror hall in the center of this building. That's really quite a beautiful sight right there. We're going to head on now on our way. We're going to the Vakil complex next. So we're in the old town now by this shrine here. And this is a little unusual for Iran because it's actually the shrine of a woman. And the shrine and tomb, as you see here, is quite simple in terms of decoration, but still quite large and grand in its own right. So all manner of different juices are really a thing here in Shiraz. We've got just everything you can imagine. Juices of herbs here used for cooking, but also for drinking. So which, uh, which one are we getting now? Uh, now I ask him that we are going for Kasni and Shatare. Kasni and Shatare. Kasni and Shatare. Yeah. OK. And this is a flower, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. This is the juice of that the flower. In a, in a some bowl that they in, in destination, so they make the juice of that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it looks fairly watery, but I, it's not, that's for sure. So I'm just going to mix it up right here, and let's give this a try. Whoa, okay, that's really, really floral. It's kind of like, almost like lavender, but a little, little different, but kind of approaching lavender. With a kind of fruitiness behind it, a lot of sugar, of course, really sugary sweet. But that's nice, that's super refreshing. Lovely. So this is the Vakil complex now, a bathhouse, a mosque, and the city's biggest old bazaar. But let's step back a moment. So this was built in the Zan dynasty. And the Zan dynasty was actually a very popular dynasty during the time of Iran. They were based from Shiraz. And the king, Kamran Khan, was very much loved by the people. He called himself the lawyer of the people as opposed to being a king. But this was built by his decree. The citadel here was built for him and for royalty. But the vacuum complex was built for the people. So this is the mosque in the Vakil complex, and this actually used to be the Jama Mosque of the city, so the Friday Mosque, as you may have learned from one of my earlier videos, but that was only during the Zan dynasty. That's got changed many times since with subsequent dynasties, and nowadays the Jama Mosque is basically in the main shrine of the city. And it's not until you come into the courtyard of this place that you realize the scale of it. This huge open courtyard in the middle, So this wide open space is the summer prayer hall. It's really quite incredible. It's made up of 48 columns and all of the columns are made from single pieces of marble. These huge, huge pieces of marble. But then the masterpiece here is the pulpit behind me. And this also one single piece of marble that Karim Khan ordered to be taken here to be used for this particular mosque. It's incredible how on earth they could even transport something like this, this huge piece of marble. So we're going to take a break from the Vakil complex now and stop off for lunch. We'll come back to the bazaar a little later in the afternoon. So this is the citadel that Kamen Khan ordered to be built as his own home. It looks like a castle, it looks like a fortification, but this was actually where he lived. And it's such a beautiful place around here. So in this corner is the leading tower of Shiraz. It's been reinforced nowadays, but kind of funny to see it looking like this, like the Leaning Tower of Pisa out here in Shiraz City. So we're stopping off for lunch at a place called Fat Homoluki. Now this is, at least according to Google, the highest rated restaurant in the city, so it's got to be worth a try for some lovely traditional Persian food. So 
I've got a traditional dish here, but actually not a traditional dish from Shiraz. So this is called Khorosh de Gilani, and it's actually a traditional dish from the town of Gilani by the Caspian Sea. So, kind of weird that I'm having it down here, but it's just kind of what I fancied. And what this is, is it's chicken cooked in like a stew, a thick sauce of pomegranate. Should be a little bit sour, the sauce. There's definitely walnuts in there and maybe, maybe aubergine, eggplant, whichever you want to call it. But let's give it a try. It looks pretty impressive, I've got to say. And there we go. Khorosta Gilani. Wow, that is so intense. Super, super pomegranate, lovely sourness, fresh, thick sauce. Wow, it's so powerful. It's just smacking the face with thick, sour pomegranate nuts coming out there the chunks of nuts there just changing the texture as well the beautifully beautifully cooked chicken lovely and tender but crispy on the outside as the chicken always seems to be that you get here oh fantastic okay this may not be traditional shiraz but this is a joy so you see these chunks of aubergine covered with this thick thick sauce mmm mmm it starts off just tasting like prunes, like raisins, then like the fruitiness of the pomegranate, and then it just develops into this huge pomegranate sourness that just smacks you. Wow. Wow, that is something else. That is something else. I've never had anything quite like it, I've got to be honest. That is really something else. So what do you do in Shiraz after a delicious but slightly intense lunch? Well, thankfully Shiraz has the perfect solution to this, Ice Cream Street. Okay, so right by the Citadel here, and this is the famous Ice Cream Street. So we come to an ice cream place called K1. This is supposedly one of the best in the area. It's gonna having a little queue and quite some attention here already, and it's definitely not peak time of day at the moment. Here the ice cream, the ice cream is here. Oh wow, look at this, thank you. Wow, look, it's so, it's so thick it won't even fall off the spoon. Mmm! Mmm! Whoa! Wow, well, that is so intense. It's so thick you have to chew it. That's incredible. Look at this, it's amazing. It's so thick you actually have to chew it. Whoa! That's incredible, it's just lovely. It kind of reminds me of the Turkish ice cream. That's the closest I can kind of relate to it. Mmm. Whoa. The south one and the statue, ice cream, and this one is the chocolate. Oh, and see, chocolate yeah. cream, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. The saffron pistachio. <laughs> Whoa. Mmm! Wow! That is incredible. That saffron flavour coming out, the pistachio nuts, and this lovely crunch of the thick, thick ice cream. Mmm! Amazing! Thick, thick, intense chocolate cocoa deliciousness. Wow, this is something else. This is something else. The perfect way to follow up on that crazy lunch. Okay, so this is my first time trying falude. I've been super excited about this. It's so strange. These ice cream noodles. And it's served in rose water here. It's like spaghetti, but it's ice cream. There we go. Whoa! Mmm, okay. Mm. It's got a really interesting texture. You don't expect it. I expect it to be like noodles. I expect it to be soft. I expect it to just melt away like ice cream. But it's actually quite icy, sorbet-like. But then with this huge, huge floral, floral taste from the rose water here. But the texture is just completely unexpected. I mean, I'm really expecting it to be just soft noodles, but you can kind of see, you can kind of see here the way the noodles are. They're quite firm. Hmm. Whoa. That's super interesting. It's so unique. I've never had anything like this in my life. 
Wow. Really, really interesting. Really great, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So this is Kewan down Ice Cream Street. Beautiful place. The guys in there were so hospitable, taking me out the back, giving me samples of all the different types of ice cream, refusing to let me pay in the end. I had to force the money on them pretty much. What a lovely place. So we're back at the Vacuil complex now and the first stop before the bazaar actually, we're gonna to go to the Vacuil bath. <laughs> That was a nice little detour on the way, but now we'll head off to the bazaar itself. And here at the intersection in the old bazaar here, it's totally beautiful. The ceiling is just incredible. It used to be the case back in the Zan Dynasty times that one of the ceiling sections would basically be dedicated to one particular shop. Nowadays, the shops have become smaller, so there's a lot of cases where it'll be split between two shops. That is just one of the most beautiful spice displays I've ever seen. It just looks stunning. What it lacks in huge, huge buckets of spice, it makes up for just in the quality of the display there. It's almost like a piece of art in spice form. So this part of the bazaar was actually added in the Kajari dynasty. And this was originally a caravanserai. Nowadays, it's just the shop fronts here, but it used to be normal caravanserai. So the merchants would come here, they could stay on the upstairs, they could set up shop below, they could go to the bazaar, they could put the animals in the middle. Now we're gonna head out of the bazaar of the Vakil complex and head to the main shrine and mosque of Shiraz, which should be quite an incredible place. You come out into this wide open courtyard, which was actually built as an extension about 10 years ago. It's huge here. The building behind me here is now used as the Jama Mosque, so the Friday Mosque, due to the amount of space here. And this is the main shrine itself, this incredible building with this onion dome and two minarets. Just beautiful. But it's not the only shrine here. There's actually another shrine to his brother, so the other son of the seventh Imam of Shia. So just to the side of the shrine here, you've got this little tiny mosque, which is said to be the oldest in Shiraz. It's shaped like a cube, like Mecca. And in the past, it's actually been used as a kind of practice run for those visiting Mecca. The shrine there was nothing short of spectacular. We're gonna head on now for one last stop of the day, the tomb of Hafiz, the famous Iranian poet. So Hafiz was the most respected Iranian poet of all time. He was around in the 14th century, and his poetry, at least in the beginning, was mostly about love. His mausoleum here is an extremely romantic place. It's a place where couples to this day will come on dates. And uh, Reza, my friend and guide here, is actually going to tell us right now one of the poems of Hafiz. Zulf aashofte wa khaykarde wa khandan lab o mast, pir hanchak wa ghazal khan o sorahi dar dast, nargisash arbad juy o lab ashafsus konan, نیم شب دوش به بالین من آمد بنشست سر فراگوش من آورد به آواز هزین گفت ای عاشق دیرینه من خوابت هست عاشقی را که چنین باده شب گیر دهند کافر عشق بود گر نشود باده پرست It means last night a very beautiful lady maybe his, maybe his mistress, his girlfriend, his wife come to my bed and ask me are you awake or not If you are not awake you don't know anything about love <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. And the sun sets over this beautiful day in this beautiful city. That's it for today, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, as always, don't be shy with that thumbs up button. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And please subscribe if you haven't already. There's plenty more content coming from Iran. Hope to see you next time, guys.